So with this having that 8.4 inch display, a 75 watt hour battery, and RDNA 3 graphics, this thing is an absolute beast when it comes to Linux gaming. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some Linux gaming on Aya Neo's biggest, baddest handheld. This has definitely turned out to be one of my favorite handheld gaming PCs, but uh, the price is definitely up there. If you're not familiar with it, basically what we've got here is a Ryzen 7 7840U, an 8.4 inch display, we've got dual track pads here, and a 75 watt hour battery. So as you can see, we've basically got the Steam Deck interface here. Now I'm not running Steam OS 3, and that's because Valve hasn't officially released it. What we've got here is Chimera OS, and I've done several videos on this. We've got everything that the Steam Deck has built in, and it seems that everything's working. I do get Bluetooth disconnecting every once in a while, but overall, it's really not that bad. We've got sound, the touchpads are working, obviously we've got the screen working here, all of the built-in buttons, and again, the operating system we're using is Chimera OS. Really easy to install. Uh, all of the information you need to know is over on their official website. You can download it directly from here. Awesome game compatibility, does use Proton just like the Steam Deck would, and it's got its own built-in desktop interface in case you want to use whatever you've got it installed on as a real Linux desktop PC. And until Valve officially releases Steam OS 3 for other devices, this is going to be my go-to. This handheld has turned out to be the best performing Phoenix Point powered handheld that we've tested on the channel so far, and it really comes down to the fact that we can take that TDP up to 54 watts with this and still get great battery life out of it. If you're not familiar with this, give you a quick rundown. For the APU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 7840U. Up to 54 watts, we can take this down to 5 if we want to. We've got that built-in 780M RDNA 3 iGPU with 12 compute units at 2700 megahertz. The unit I have here has 64 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running at 7500 mega transfers per second. We've also got a 4 terabyte M.2 SSD. It's PCIe 4.0 and these support a 2280 M.2. We've got a massive 8.4 inch IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It'll do up to 500 nits of brightness, a 75 watt hour battery hall based joysticks and triggers, dual 6-axis gyro, and we've obviously got those two trackpads built in. Needless to say, I and Neo went all out with this handheld. And yeah, Linux works great on this handheld, especially Chimera OS. I haven't tested Hollow ISO or anything like that, but uh, I mean, this is pretty much overkill for a handheld. We do not need 64 gigabytes of RAM, but this will allow us to allocate a lot to VRAM. I went with 12 gigs from the BIOS, and uh, going back to the main menu, I've got a lot of stuff installed that I want to test out. And again, on this device here with Chimera OS, we've got access to everything that the Steam Deck has. We can actually open up this performance overlay. We can set the refresh rate of the display. We can turn on system-wide FSR if we want to. The only thing we can't do from this menu is actually adjust the TDP on this handheld because it was specifically designed for the Steam Deck's APU. But with a little bit of tweaking, you can actually do it from the BIOS on this handheld, or you can install a third-party app, something like uh, Simple Ryzen TDP. This is really great, and the fact that it works with Chimera OS is awesome. We can get right in here, set our minimum TDP, set our maximum TDP, and if you wanted to run this at 15 watts, you definitely could, but I'm going to be running this at 30 watts. Now we've got that 75 watt hour battery and uh, at 30 watts we can actually get more runtime out of this than we can on the Steam Deck at its maximum wattage. So I figured, you know, getting that extra performance is going to be well worth it. And the first game we're going to be testing out here is Cyberpunk 2077. And this is one of those games that works absolutely amazing on these Phoenix Point APUs, but it seems like we're actually getting a little better performance here in Linux than we did in Windows, and it could be due to new driver optimizations or even game optimizations. But right now we're at 1200p low settings, FSR is set to performance, we got an average of 82 FPS. Just to put this into perspective for you, in Windows, same exact settings on this handheld, we get an average of around 78. So we're not that far off, but I mean, we are a bit higher here in Linux, which is really awesome to see. Either way you look at it, I mean, with Windows or Linux, running Cyberpunk 2077 at 1200p on a handheld with integrated graphics is pretty awesome. But I've got a lot more games that I want to test out, so let's go ahead and move over to something else. 
here we have Spider-Man Remastered. And with this one, we did have to take it down to 800p. Now, if you want to run this at 1200p, 30fps, or even 40, you can definitely do it. Even at a much lower wattage, around 15 watts, we could run this at 1200p, 30fps, low settings. But I was really interested to see if we could at least stick it at 60, and yeah, we're well over. I actually got an average of 68 FPS with this game. For these next games, I've just kind of set this up stationary to make it a bit easier on me when filming the screen. And I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Here we have Mortal Kombat 1. 1200p low settings fsr is set to performance and we're right there at 60. every once in a while you will see it dip down just a bit i think the lowest i saw through my gameplay was 57. you could definitely alleviate this by going down to 800p but it didn't bug me too much i'm not playing this competitively moving over to doom eternal this is one i always love to test on these apus because it is a great performer and right now we're at 1200p medium settings with no resolution scale Going into this, I knew we were going to get great performance, and overall we had an average of 78 FPS. I did see it dip down to 67, but never under. And, uh, you know, turning V-Sync on with any of these games, just locking it down at 60, will make for a really smooth experience. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart 800p low settings. Now I was really hoping we could kind of lock this down at 60, but even set up like this, we had those dips under 60. So FSR is going to be your best friend here. I'd say FSR set to balance would net us a real steady experience. I definitely wanted to throw at least one racing game in here, so we have Forza Horizon 5, 1200p medium settings, we got an average of 82 FPS. It seems that Windows with the same kind of settings here does net us much better performance out of this game, but overall it's still a really enjoyable experience in Linux. Here's Hogwarts Legacy, and this is one that is still giving us issues on these APUs. It's much better on this system, given that we have that RDNA 3i GPU and much more powerful CPU based on Zen 4. But even at 800p low, we get those dips under 60. And the final game I wanted to test out was Starfield. 800p low, with FSR as low as we can go, I believe it's 50% resolution scale. In the wide open, out here, not too bad. We actually average 46 FPS. Of course, it would be nice to hit 60, and you can indoors, but as soon as you move over to a city, like let's say Jemison, it's gonna fall on its face. I had an average of 28 FPS in city, and uh, that's not great, especially given the settings we have here, but I'm really gonna chalk it up to the game itself. I think we could definitely see better performance in the future. Overall, pretty impressed here with the Linux performance, and another thing you gotta keep in mind is iNeo is actually gonna be releasing a Linux distro. It's been a long time coming, there's no word on an official release yet, but it's known as Aya OS, and uh, as soon as we can get our hands on that, we will be taking a look at it on this handheld. But the last thing I wanted to talk about here was battery life. Now remember, with this, we have a 75 watt hour battery. I mean, it's absolutely massive. With the screen brightness set to 100%, 10 watt TDP set from simple TDP, total power draw from the battery is around 21 watts. That's going to net us about 214 minutes. At a 15 watt TDP, total draw is right there at 29 watts. We can get around 155 minutes. At a 20 watt TDP, total draw is around 43 watts, so that'll get us around 125 minutes. And if you wanted to go full boat with this, 54 watts, it's drawn around 74 watts from the battery, and this is all through gameplay with that screen at 100% brightness, around 60 minutes of runtime out of this handheld. So obviously at those lower TDPs with indie games and, you know, easier to run stuff, you can see some amazing battery life out of this. And at 20 watts, this is still netting more battery life than the Steam Deck totally maxed out. So, I mean, it's definitely got that going for it, but it is a pretty expensive handheld. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I had a bunch of viewers asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. It could be a different Linux distro, different operating system, or even more games or emulators running. If you want to learn a little more, I'll leave some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.